In this section, we'll take a look at the Place Label tool in a little bit more detail and how some of the labeling capabilities uh, can be utilized in Open Roads Designer. So we're going to do this within our plan view file. I'm going to zoom into an area up here where we've got a little roadway and a building next to that roadway that we can annotate. So I'm going to go to my Place Label tool found on the Drawing Production ribbon or tab and I'm going to select the label that I want to place. For example, I could place the alignment name out of our plan category. Uh, remember from what I showed earlier when we were in the cross sections that you can place this with either a leader or without a leader. That's kind of your choice. And then there's some other options down in here of if that label is going to be rotated horizontally, vertically, or in line with the data points that you click. Um, are you going to indicate the place where the terminator starts or the place where the text is located first and how do you want to justify this do you always want it left justified always want it right justified or automatically adjust itself left and right depending which direction the leader is now let's go ahead and place this first on this alignment here and let's label this alignment Following my prompts, it asks me to identify the element. So this is the element that it's referencing, that it's going to read the alignment name off of. So I pick that. And now it tells me to identify the, the point location. That is the location of my terminator, since I'm using this start at terminator mode. So I'm going to use my nearest snap and just make sure I snap onto that alignment. And we'll place that text in there. So it has now labeled that and place that text. Now, just to show you that the text is also dynamically updating, um, if this alignment name changed, that text would automatically change. There's nothing that I would have to do manually. Now, this text, this alignment, is actually in a reference file. Uh, so instead of going and changing it there, what I'm going to do is just draw another little uh, line in here. So we'll set our feature definition for this. We'll just use geom baseline. And we'll call that GeomBL. Let's just take the generic name for it. I'll just put a little line in along there. And now let's go place a label on top of that. So our place label tool. I want to reference this line here. We'll just label this endpoint right there. And you see it's labeled as GeomBL. Now if I went into this element and I selected it and went into its properties and I adjusted that name, alignment A and I save that you can see that the text immediately updates that's happening because the text is associated to the element that's why this toggle right here is on so let's look at these toggles in a little bit more detail and place another label so over here I've got a green block kind of representing a building let's label the station and offset to a couple corners of that building so I'll go select my station and offset cell definition. I need to identify the reference element. So I want the stations and offsets calculated from that. And I want to label this point right here. Now notice as I'm labeling this point before I accept it, that I've got all three of these options on right now. So it labels that point, calculates the station and offset of this point relative to that alignment. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to label this point here, but I'm going to turn off this third option. This third option is called relative association. So if I disable that, so I, I've got my scaling still turned on, I've got my association turned on, but not relative association. And let's place another label here, and it calculates that value. Now just to take this one more level, let's go ahead and turn association all the way off. And we'll place a third label off of that same point and place it there. Now, since these two are off the same point, you can see they've got the same values. Where it becomes different is when this element actually moves. So if I grab a hold of this element and I slide it somewhere, so let's just move this element up here a little bit. 
watch what happens to our different annotations. So this annotation here, which is the one we placed with all three options on, stayed relative to that point, or it was associated to that point, so it moved and the text updated. It was also relative to that point, the third option, so it stayed in a relative position. So this element here, this label here, we had the association turned on. So as the element moved, the leader line stayed associated with it and moved. The text also updated to reflect the new position of that point. But because the relative was turned off, the position of the label did not change. It was not relative to this element. It's associated to it, but not relative to it. Now this third label we placed here was neither relative or associative to it. So when this element moved, it didn't know what to do. It's just a label hanging in space. It labels a point here, doesn't know where this element's at, isn't following that element. So it's not going to move. Now, how are these labels created? Uh, this is all built and can be in, uh, included as part of your workspace, which is what we've done here. And that's what you're going to want to do in a production environment so you're not having to go through and create these all the time. But you may find times where you want to go in and do some minor adjustments or include a little bit of extra data on a label that's already there. So let me give you an example. Let's say we wanted to label the x, y coordinates of this point here. We do have another option in here to label x, y coordinates. So I could go in and select that and place it relative to this element. And I could create another label here that had the x, y coordinates on it. But I don't really want two labels. I just want to add those coordinates onto this existing label. How could I do that? Well, the way we could do that is by editing the text that is this label. So we'll go to our text edit tool. We'll select this text. It shows up here in our text editor. And notice that it's kind of dithered out, or at least some of these elements are dithered out a little bit. These are actual computed fields. And that's how it's able to calculate the stations or the offsets or the coordinates. Now these values here, these are just text values. I could change these to be anything I wanted. If I wanted to write out the word station and the word offset, or I wanted to put an equal sign in there, something like that, I could certainly do that. But what we can do is we can add additional computed fields like these. So let's add, and let's say we wanted to maybe put in here x equals, and then add that x value wherever we point to. We can do that by going into our Insert Fields tool. And there's different types of fields throughout the software. We can pull fields from individual elements, from models, from files. And we can pull it from the Open Roads data as well. So I'm going to pull it from my Open Roads Plan View data. So I'll accept that. And a new dialog is going to appear where I can select a variety of different pieces of information related to Open Roads elements in a plan view. I can get my x and y coordinates. I can get links. I can calculate different things. Um, I'm just going to pull in my x and y coordinates. So I'll pick it x. I can tell it how I want that to be labeled. Uh, let's see, let's label it with our master unit and a label. I can give it an accuracy, so I could tell it that I want to label that down to two decimal places. Variety of other options here, I'll just set those two for now, and we'll accept that. And it puts that value into here, or at least it puts a placeholder value into here. It can't put the real value yet, because this is a label that could be placed at multiple locations. We'll do the same thing for the Y coordinate. We'll go ahead and drop this in here, select the plan view coordinate. We'll pick the Y point, same labeling parameters. We'll go ahead and use those and accept that. So if we data point to accept that text that we're placing, it now updates that label and puts that in there. Now notice that it did not update the coordinates yet. Sometimes that happens and you have to come in here and just wiggle the text a little bit. So if I grab a hold of this, and I should be able to wiggle it around there a little bit and then get it to compute. Um, little glitch that we're working on there too, but it's now gone back and computed that. You can see the coordinate values are the same as the label that I produced independently. Um, 
They're just different number of decimal places because I set mine up to be different. I could likewise go back to an, an existing label and adjust other parameters. So maybe I wanted this station to, to read out just to the nearest tenth of a foot, and the same with the offset. I don't really need them down to a hundred. I could go into these fields, double click on them. It's going to show me that field that it's labeling, and I could make appropriate adjustments here to how I wanted that to appear for my standards. Now if I did this in the cell library and updated the cell, then this would be available for everybody on the project to use. I'm just editing a single label here. But to show you a little bit of an information about how this pulls together and how you can edit individual labels. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.